Hello, hello. Elixir 118 dropped. I'm going to look at some of the highlights later. I hope to do some videos on maybe deeper dives into certain things. But if you're interested in the highlights, let's take a look at this. So there's a blog post that came along. You can also take a look at the change log and it has a whole bunch of information there uh, that's similar to the blog post. But I'm going to go through the blog post for some cool things here. I think the biggest thing that people are talking about is the, the type system, right? So Elixir 117 introduced the type system. They mentioned that here. And if I remember correctly, they first introduced atoms and maps, right? So the, the type inference for them. And I remember, I thought it was really clever because atoms were the simplest and maps were the most complex types like data structures. Uh, but since I think in 117, they added support for all the primitive types, if I'm not mistaken. So mentions them here, that kind of thing, right? So what's new in 118? 118, they're adding um, inference for, well, it's function calls and then uh, patterns and return types. So they have some cool examples here. And again, I might do some deeper dives later on these things, but you have this user, you have this drive function, and you see it takes a user struct, right? Um, and then you can also look at this kind of thing, but we'll take a look at that in a second. But but the, the first thing, let's take a look at this, it takes a user struct, right, the drive function. So uh, if you were to pass an incorrect argument, right, this is passing okay user, you can imagine you're piping this, these things through and maybe you get an okay user instead of a user, then the compiler will actually uh, give you a warning, right? It says uh, incompatible types, give it into user drive, user drive okay, user right, given types, okay user. I like that it highlights it red, that's pretty cool, right? It expected the user uh, struct. Now, if you notice it says dynamic here, you might be like wondering why it says dynamic and that's because it's, it's inference, right? We haven't typed this, this is just doing it based on like what it understands about the system. So I think that's why it's doing dynamic there at, at the very least, uh, at least that's my, my understanding of it. Um, but also it has here, oh, I didn't even look at this, where card choices was given the type of non-empty list, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, the typing viola violation is on drive here. I, li I like how explicit this is. It, it reads really nicely, honestly. Um, it also says consider the expression below. So, right, so the first one was the function type inference that we saw up here, or sorry, the type checking of function calls. Now we're going to look into the inference of patterns and return types. So I think that's here, right? Consider the expression below. We're expecting the user drive call to return error, which cannot possibly be true, right? So now it's, this is so cool because if you imagine your code, you might have changed at some point the API of drive and like maybe returned error before and now returns error in a message or something like that, right? And it's hard to catch all of those. And this is where a compiler is, is awesome. Um, uh, uh, like a good uh, compiler like this, right? So. Now it's telling us that this will never match because the results of user drive has this type, right? It's either an error uh, with these things or okay in a term, right? Which would be uh, whatever, the, the okay type. So in any case, we can never match that error. So if you if you follow Jose on on uh, Twitter, you might've seen, he, he's been posting things like, oh, we caught this, this issue or like this uh, piece of code that can never be reached. I think it's these kinds of things like you, oh, this can never be reached or, you know, that, that kind of thing. So it's really cool. Um, so that, that is awesome. I like that. So I think uh, what it doesn't do, so it, it sees Elixir 18 also supports for uh, tuples and lists. So I guess, yeah, that, that makes sense. Those were not listed in the primitives in 117. So I think it's doing that. Um, the things that are missing are four comprehensions with and closures. Um, so there's there's a list there. You can take a look at it. I'm not gonna go too deeply into it. Um, but this is the cool thing. And I think this is where maybe if, again, if you were following Jose on Twitter, you might've seen some of these. For existing code bases with reasonable code coverage, most type errors report will come from un uncovering dead code, right? Like things that will never be executed. Um, they have this example, you know, you call it in private. You have all of these possible cases. Maybe at some point they were executed, right? But they're no longer there. Um, and so, you know, private is never used, nil one. Like, oh, cool. So you can remove that. Uh, oh, there's another, there's there's a few other ones. So yeah, because oh, this is parsing an integer, got it. it it'll always be kind of like this. Um, so what future work? Like, what are they doing? Uh, again, it seems like with construct for comprehensions and protocols. Now, this protocols one might be sooner than we expect. So. There's a blog post, or that a blog post, a pull request, sorry, from Jose, a type checking of implementations, and this is about protocol implementations. So this might actually be getting in there already, as of this recording, at least. Um, so that's, I think, the type system, the, or the, the type work, right? The types work. Uh, there's also language server listeners, like this, all this stuff, in order to 
have a single large language server, right? It, it was really cool. They mentioned it a while ago, uh, they're going to kind of combine, but they combined, they created a team of the people who kind of maintain and created all the language servers, and they're trying to work on a single one. I think the big thing about this is um, this, this release addresses the issue by introducing a compiler lock, ensuring that only a single operating system running Elixir compiles your project at a given moment. So I think this is the idea that like you could have race conditions or stuff like that. So, um, but that opened up some really interesting improvements for IEX2. I uh, should watch this little video. It's basically um, you can you can make IEX auto recompile and like do it from another IEX session, and this new one would like update here uh, if you change the code. So cool stuff there. Uh, the other another big thing is the built-in JSON module, right? So I think in uh, Erlang twenty seven, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, it's right here. Uh, it supported uh, the, the native JSON. And now this is bringing it to Elixir. And it's cool because uh, m maybe most people are using JSON now. I, mean, I guess most new projects are probably using JSON, the ASON, this one right here. Um, and I think that library might eventually just wrap this one if you don't want to migrate, but it's probably worthwhile to migrate to, to JSON, JSON. Uh, and it's cool. I think it's, it's supposed to be really fast too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely give, give that a look. Uh, close to my heart in terms of tests, uh, changes to XUnit. There's this uh, param parameterized tests. And I think the idea is that this allows us to test um, different, uh, a module, like a test module uh, with different kind of cases, right? So you can pass different types of partitions in this example, right? Say there, this is a registry example. You can say, uh, basically on my setup function, I wanna behave differently when I have one or eight partitions, right? So you can kind of imagine running two groups of tests with that. So if you look at this, uh, you add the parameterized thing at the level of the module, and on your setup, you can actually use the partitions, right? It's getting it out of the config. So this is your sort of context that you're getting passed in here. So you can imagine starting different types of, of um, tests that way, and it'll run both of them, right? So you'll run all the tests in this test module with one partition and all the tests in this module with eight partitions, right? That's because that's your what you're configuring. So uh, pretty cool stuff. I think there's also stuff here about like how you can group these things right here. Um, I haven't delved deeply into that. But I think that's like if you have shared state and different types of groups, and you want to run those asynchronously and all this stuff, but not within the same group, stuff like that, you can do that. So definitely check that out. Uh, perhaps finally, yep, finally, the mixed form migrate, there's just a cool little thing that might migrate. Um, like uh, things that are deprecated. Um, and I and I love that. I think that's cool. Uh, I've already been seeing some of this like it, you're the, you know, when you format, it, it'll change uh, things like this, like char list to using the C sigil. And uh, I guess we we lost unless some of us liked it. Some people didn't. I get why some people didn't. So you know, it is what it is. Um, but uh, it, it'll rewrite all of those for you. I do think uh, because it, there's a warning somewhere, I remember, yeah, because this flag rewrites AST, it is not guaranteed the migrator format will always be valid uh, when using combination with macros that also perform AST rewriting. So if you use this, always just like double check. I, I think your, your code might not just compile if you have some other stuff that you're manipulating AST with. So um, that's the highlights. I think there's a lot of cool stuff. Definitely check out the change log. There's a whole lot of work, uh, of course, that went into this. I'm um, really excited. And again, I'll try to do a little bit of more deep dives into certain topics uh, in the coming days. I hope you like it.